Okay, let's try this again. We missed out on the whole first fucking bit. I think I can just go back. Let's just go back. During World War I, peace broke out. It was 1914 on Christmas on the Western Front. Despite strict orders not to chillax with the enemy, British and German soldiers left the trenches, crossed no man's land, and gathered to bury their dead, exchange gifts, and play games. Meanwhile, it's 2017, the West has been at peace for decades, and wow, we stock at trust. Surveys show that over the past 40 years, fewer people than fewer people say that they trust each other. Surveys are puzzled. Why even in peacetime do friends become enemies, and why even in wartime do enemies become friends? I think game theory can help explain our epidemic of distrust and how we can fix it. To understand all this, let's play a game. So I kind of cheat because I know the other characters' personalities, and I'll probably use that in order to help myself uh, be more victorious. But I'm a dick fuck. Okay, so if the other player cheats and doesn't put in a coin, I'm supposed to cheat as well. But, like, obviously the first time I did it, I cooperated every time, but whatever, I know the AI now. Right, I should also cheat. Wow, that's mean, and also the correct answer, because if we both cooperate, you both get a coin gain three. And that's your dilemma. Trust is nice. Let's take a blah 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 You know how to pause the fucking video and read. Okay, my first real move is cooperate. You should always cooperate. Because if you cooperate, then other people want to cooperate with you. That's how fucking cooperation works. So, this guy right here, he's the mimic. He's just me in a blue hat. I don't know why I wore the red hat today. I guess because it's December. Also, why is Finding of Isaac Kid going up to a coin machine? You'd think he'd be terrified. Okay, so this is the cheater. He's a dickhead. every time and that would maximize my score. Which is what we're gonna do. I don't know I don't know how I'm gonna gonna fuck with the other people. But the first time I was super nice and, and just like and fucking cooperated with everybody. Okay, we'll cooperate with her once because she deserves it. It's like, oh, thank you. Don't ever fucking cheat this guy, because he'll lose his shit. I like this guy, because that's the appropriate attitude to have. I'll assume you're honest until you prove yourself to be a cheater. That's nice. Also, he's wearing a nice hat. It's gotta be like an eight gallon hat. Okay, so first time we should just instantly cheat. Now we're gonna cooperate. And now we're all even and he's confused as shit. This time we're gonna cheat. Haha, <laughs> bitch. Okay, now we're gonna cooperate. Oh, fuck. And now we're gonna cooperate again. Fucker. Okay, we're gonna cooperate again, because I'm betting this time he's planning on cheating. And my total score is 41, the first time I got 27. Which is pretty good, the lowest and highest possible scores are 7 and 49 respectively. 
So are these strange characters you just played against? The copycat? No, I'll start with cooperate, and afterwards I just copied whatever you did in the last round. Meow. Always cheat, the strong shall eat the weak. Always cooperate, let's be best friends, less than three. Listen, partner, I'll talk cooperate and keep cooperating, but if y'all ever cheat me, I'll cheat you back till the end of tarnation. First day, analyze you start cooperate, cheat, cooperate, cooperate. If you cheat back, I'll act like copycat. If you never cheat back, I'll act like always cheat to exploit you. Elementary, my dear Watson. Now what if they were to play against each other? Okay. You know what? Grudge is the best. We're gonna say Grudge. I'd say the Grudger's gonna win. Okay, first match. Copycat versus Always Cheat. Negative one versus plus three. Oh, by the way. Maybe skeptical about what that Christmas tree on the World War One fruit. Surely that was just a fluke. Copycat versus Always Cooperate. Plus twenty. Plus twenty. Copycat versus Grudger. 2020. Yes, the truce was dramatic, but it was neither unique nor unusual. Copycat versus Detective. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Not every trench joined in peace, but it was pretty widespread. Many front lines came up with the idea independently. And again, despite specific strict orders not to. Although, if you've learned anything about humanity, it's that when you tell them not to do shit, they usually do. Is the copycat about to fucking win here? Always cheat versus always cooperate. 30 minus 10. And in fact, even before Christmas, several front lines had already established an unofficial secret peace. Always cheat versus grudger, plus 3 versus negative 1. They called it the live and live system. Basically, if you don't shoot me, I don't shoot you. And this worked in a lot of places. Always cheat versus detective. See, the detective had to spend four turns figuring out what was going on. You may still be skeptical. Most soldiers don't spontaneously form peace with the enemy. What's so special about trench warfare? Most cooperate versus Grudger. Plus 20 plus 20. Well, here's what's unique about the trenches. Unlike almost every other form of wear, you have to say, face the same specific soldiers every day. Minus one versus plus twenty-seven. It's a repeated game, and that makes all the difference. Grudger versus Detective. The winner is the fucking copycat. The golden rule: reciprocal altruism, tit for tat, live and let live. That's why peace would emerge in the trenches of World War One. Well, hey. The Grudger did do better than the two other ones, and who the fuck would guess that it would be the copycat, am I right? When you're forced to play the same game with the same specific people, not just the same generic enemy over and over again, the copycat doesn't just win the battle, it wins the war. But things change a lot when you play multiple rounds of the game. The same game, what if we play multiple tournaments? Well, let's let our population of players evolve over time into three step days. Play a tournament. Let them all play against each other and tally up the scores and eliminate losers. Get rid of the five worst players. If there's a tie, pick randomly between them. Clone the five best players. If there's a tie, pick randomly between them. And repeat for as long as you like. Nope, you don't have to wait for people to literally die and reproduce for culture to evolve. All that's needed is that unsuccessful behaviors go away and successful behaviors are imitated. So now, let's see the action. We'll start with the following population of players. 15 always cooperates, 5 always cheats, and 5 copycats. We'll ignore Grudger and Detective for now. We're going to let the tournament and eliminate reproduce a dozen times or so. Let's make another note. Who do you think will win the first tournament? Place your bets again. Okay, so always cheats going to win because all the cooperators and stuff are going to give them their first round advantage. Makes sense. Always cheats has a lot of always cooperates to exploit. Let's see if you're correct. Play tournament. Eliminate bottom five. Reproduce top five. Sadly, you're correct. The always cheaters won this time, and their numbers increased by five. But let's try a few more rounds of this.
once they run out of nice people to fucking cheat with, always cheat is still growing at the expense of always cooperate, who they leech off of. And once they're all gone, the duplicators. And now all the always cooperates are getting. Now, wait. See, when these guys work with each other, they actually have a much higher chance. Because they get the plus 20, whereas these guys get the fucking minus zero. That's right, the always cheats become a victim of their own success. They exploited the naive always cooperators, but once they ran out of them, they had to face copycats. Who are nice, but not naive. By simply copying the other player's move, copycats can play nice with each other, while always cheats just cheat themselves. Not only that, but it also means copycat can give always cheat a taste of their own medicine. So as a result, Copycat inherits the Earth. So in the short run, you were right. Always cheat won the first few rounds, but in the end, its exploitativeness was its downfall. It reminds me of the quote, We are punished by our sins, not for them. Oh, and by the way, this is similar even if we put Grudger and Detective back in. So treating everybody else the way you treat, they treat you, is the same. Sometimes a few grudgers may stick around, because when all players, except grudger and copycat, are eliminated, the two tie. So it seems the math of the game theory is telling us something. That copycat's philosophy do unto others as you would have them do unto you may not be just a moral truth, but also a mathematical truth. However, there's a problem. Look around, the world's full of total jerkwads. The copycat is the strategy in this repeated game of trust that's so powerful that even soldiers in World War I trenches independently evolved a similar strategy. Why, then, are there so many untrusting, untrustworthy people? What's causing our epidemic of untrust? A clue is in that sentence itself, in this repeated game of trust. So far, we've only talked about the change of the players. What about a change in the game? What could lead to the evolution? of distrust. And before everything goes to heck, let's start with something else. Here's a world filled entirely with always cooperates, except for one always cheat and one copycat. Use the buttons on the right to start the sim, go through it step by step, or reset it. Okay, let's go through it step by step. You know what, uh, we'll just start it. You already know copycat wins handily in the long run under our current rules. But that's our current rules, which say players play a match against each other for 10 rounds per match. Just copycat still win at 7 rounds, 5 rounds, 3, 2, 1. Change the number of rounds with the slider below, then start the sim and see what happens. Feel free to experiment. So if we only do one round, the copycat's fucked because he always opens with cooperate. Right? Put it down to one. Watch this. The fucking negatives are going to win because the copycats open their first round by cooperating, which gets them fucked when they run into a cheater. reach this point where nobody gets anything because they're all assholes. Let's try the high end, 20. As you saw, if you don't play enough rounds here, five or less, always cheat dominates. Uh, yeah, I didn't care enough to do it right. By 1985, when Americans were asked how many close friends they had, the most common answer was three. 
2004, the most common answer was zero. <laughs> Holy shit! Now we have fewer friends across class, racial, economic, and political lines because we have fewer friends, period. And as you just discovered for yourself, there are fewer repeat interactions there are, the more distrust will spread. No, mass media doesn't count. There must be two interactions between specific individuals. I know, it gets worse. There's another way to breed distrust. Here are the payoffs for the trust game. With the normal payoffs, copycat winners, but now change the both cooperate reward from 2 to 1, then click start. Okay. Even though plus one is still more than the punishment for both cheating, zero, what happens? Holy shit. Okay, we can stop that. Here, let's, uh, let's bump that back up, because that shit's depressing. Let's bump it down. Yeah, let's bump down the reward for cheating and see what happens. Oh, fuck. The same thing always happens. With a lower win rate reward, always cheat takes over. Game Theory has two powerful ideas about this. Zero-sum game. This is a sadly common belief that a game for us must come at a loss to them and vice versa. The non-zero-sum game. This is when people who make the hard effort to create a win-win solution, or at least avoid a lose-lose. Without the non-zero-sum game, trust cannot evolve. Speaking of which, let us now look at our third and final barrier into the evolution of trust. Mistakes. Whatever, you, you see the fucking web thing if you want to experiment with it, you can. As cool as copycat is, there's a huge fatal weakness that I haven't mentioned. To understand the problem, let's play, say, two copycats are playing against each other. Being nice players, their first moves will always be cooperate. Normally, they just pay back until they each other's kindness and sing kumbaya till the end of time. But what if while trying to reciprocate goodness, mistakes, miscommunication, misinterpretations, and accidents happen all the time in real life. But if the other person doesn't think it was an accident, the other player, being a copycat, had to retaliate. And you being a copycat as well will also have to retaliate. And thus, like Hatfields and McCoys, the two copycats will spiral into an endless cycle of vengeance that started over a single mistake long ago. Tragic. But now, there are other types of players who can deal with mistakes. Let's meet some new faces. Or new hats, anyways. Copy Kitty. Hello. I'm like a copycat, except I cheat back only after you cheat me twice in a row. After all, the first one could be a mistake. Per Simpleton. Hi. I try to start cooperate. If you cooperate back, I do same thing as last mood, even if it mistake. If you cheat back, I do opposite thing as last mood, even if it mistake. Random. Monkey Robot, Ninja Peach, and Tacos, while I'm so random, just place cheater cooperate random with 50 50 chance. Alright, let's see how well these peeps do when they play in a tournament. Let's start out with a dozen always cooperates versus our old winner, the fair copycat, and our three new characters. The Forgiving Copy Kitten, the Dull Simpleton, and the Silly Man. In each round of match, players have a small chance of making a mistake, let's say 5%. What do you think will come out on top? Think carefully, then place your bets. Why don't we say... to say copy kitten. Either copy kitten or simpleton. Alright, you bet copy kitten wins. Let's find out. Yeah, we'll start it in quick mode. Oh, simpleton's kicking ass. Your bet was close, but no banana. Simpleton wins. This is because simpleton is actually capable of exploiting always cooperate. They both start cooperating, but if simpleton makes a mistake and cheats... Since always cooperate never retaliates, it'll keep cheating. Now let's try. Same thing as before, except instead of the half always cooperate, it's half always cheat. It's a much less forgiving, more hostile environment. Who do you think will win now? Copy kid. 
I'm gonna keep betting on Copy Kitten, cause Kitten. Yeah, see? Kinda creates this loop back. You were right on the money. Copy Kitten was wins this time. It's surprising that even with an even meaner starting population, Copy Kitten, a more forgiving version of Copy Cat, was the most successful. No, Copy Kitten is not so forgiving, it doesn't entirely even entirely wipe out copycat. It shares room. In this case, a bit of miscommunication could lead to even more forgiveness. But this is true for all levels of miscommunication. Use a slider below to change the amount of miscommunication, then hit stars. 5% copy candidates. What happens at 0, 20, or 50? It only goes up to 50 because at that point, every move is a coin flip. Okay, first things first, all the way to 50. It looks to me like Rando's doing pretty good. Because when Rando- Oh? Oh? What? Okay, let's try... 28. This is pretty neat. Oh. Wow, Cheater just wins instantly. you say the chances are of you making a mistake in real life? Is it more than 5%? Because apparently more than 5% is fucking instant death. Oh, I'm sorry. Around... Okay, let's find the exact point where it goes overboard. At 10%? Let's try 9%. So it's right at 10% where things start getting weird. Weird. The results turn out something like this. At 0%, the fair copycat wins. At 1% to 9%, the forgiving copycat wins. At 10% to 49%, Unfair, unforgiving, always cheat wins. At 50%, nobody wins ever. That's why miscommunication is such an interesting barrier to trust. A little bit of it leads to forgiveness, but too much and it leads to widespread distrust. I think our modern media technology, as much as it helped us increase communication, has increased our miscommunication much more. At last, let's experiment with all the numbers, the nods and sliders. Let's play in the sandbox mode. Okay, I want some grudgers, I want like, nine of them, I want five cheaters, I said I want nine grudgers, I want nine grudgers of five cheaters, two copy kittens, two copy cats, three copy kittens, Um, one less of those. Damn it. Whatever. Some simpletons. Let's just the payoffs. Sure, let's see what happens. When everybody cheats. So if you treat all cheaters like assholes, the simpleton wins. Reproduce. Ooh. Let's see what we learned today, because this, this is just the kind of thing you should fuck with yourself, really. Game Theory has shown us the same, the three things we need for the evolution of trust. Repeat interaction. Trust keeps a relationship going, but you need the knowledge of possible future repeat interactions before trust can evolve. Possible win-wins. Your mouth must be playing a non-zero-sum game. 
the game where it's at least possible that both players can be better off. A win-win. Low miscommunication. If the level of miscommunication is too high, trust breaks down. But when there's a little bit of miscommunication, it pays to be more forgiving. Of course, real-world trust is affected by much more than this. There's reputation, shared values, contracts, cultural markers, blah blah blah, and let's not forget the biggest lesson. If there's one big takeaway from all of game theory, it's this. What the game is defines what the players do. Our problem today is that the people are losing trust, it's that our environment acts against the evolution of trust. That may seem cynical or naive, that we're merely products of our environment. But as game theory reminds us, we are each other. We are each other's environment. In the short run, the game defines the players, but in the long range, it's us players who define the game. So what do you do to create the condition? So do what you can do to create the conditions necessary to evolve trust. Build relationships, find win-wins, communicate clearly. Maybe then we can stop firing each other, get out of our own trenches, cross no man's lands, come together, and all learn to live and let live. Less than Well, that was fucking weird.